going on everybody? Today I'm going to show you an inside look at the new Spinning Records Progressive House sample pack which is out now on Splice. Here's a track I made using sounds from the pack. So Progressive House is all about building up energy throughout the track and layering different elements with each other so everything sounds nice and cohesive and big. So I'll get into all the individual layers I used here and how I put this all together, but what actually started the idea for the track was a loop from the pack. So if I go into the pack over here, we can go into the loops folder and then I'll go to melodic loops. And the loop I ended up using to start the track was this one right here. So I threw that into Logic over here and then I just threw in a couple effects to get it sitting in the mix better, like some reverb and delay. So first up I have this compression. Then to make it nice and atmospheric, I'm adding some delay and some reverb here. So I really loved those chords and wanted to start the track with that, but then I needed to build the energy a little bit. And how I did that was to chop up the chords for the second half of the build and the rest of the drop. So you don't want these long drawn out chord notes when the drop comes in or else the energy isn't going to be there. So here are the chords all chopped up. So you'll notice that rhythm is introducing the rhythm of the drop in the buildup, so it makes the transition between the buildup and drop pretty smooth. So for the drop, I just wanted to build upon those chords. So what I did is I have the same chords right here. but I obviously wanted to make them sound a lot bigger in the drop. So what I did is layer a bunch of saw chords on top of that and also a bass beneath it. You might have heard in the layers there, a great way to get really big sounding saw chords is to actually add a piano sample underneath it. So I have the saw chords right here. And then underneath that, I've layered it with a piano. It really just fills out the whole low end of the drop. So I wanted to have some kind of catchy lead melody playing the whole time. And what I did was go into the pack and I went into the vocal loops folder to find a vocal chop. And I found this one right here. And that's obviously in a different key than the rest of the track. So what I did was pitch it down four semitones. So it'd be in key. Then I just added some external processing to make it fit better with the rest of the drop. So I'm just adding some compression and then I'm adding some EQ after that to brighten it up a lot. And I'm adding some saturation to the high end to brighten it up even more. And then in the send down here, I have the reverb that I'm using. So that loop just fit really nicely with these chords. Yeah. 
And you'll notice how the melodies kind of counteract with each other. Like at the start of the bar, the chords aren't playing at all. So there's empty space here at the start of each bar. And that really gives a chance for the vocal chop to come through and start the drop. So to build up the energy into the drop, I have a bunch of filtering and gain automation going on here. So I go into the automation. First of all, I'm filtering this vocal chop. And I'm also reducing the gain during the buildup so it hits harder when the drop comes in. So I'm reducing it by two decibels during the buildup. Then I have this filter on here, just a simple filter. Just to keep the buildup a little more low energy than the drop. I also introduced the piano during the buildup to make it sound a little bit bigger. Everything is going to my master bus down here and I'm filtering the whole track throughout the buildup and adding some reverb and delay and just filtering out the low end so the drop has more impact. So to add more attack and impact to the bass, I have this layer right here. And to get that sound, I actually took a loop from the pack and just sampled one note from it. So if we go into the pack here, I ended up going to the bass loops folder and using this loop right here. And then I just sampled the first note of that and I'll show you how to do that. I'll drag in the loop right here. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off the rest of this. And then I can throw it in Logic Sampler by hitting Control E. And now it's made a sampler instrument out of that where I can play it on my keyboard. And that's what I've done up here. Layered with the sub, you can see how it gives the beginning of each note more impact. I've also EQ'd the bass pluck so it doesn't get in the way of the sub bass. And I've pushed it out to the sides with Sound Toys Micro Shift. So now I'll go through some of the drum samples I use from the pack. So if we zoom in a little bit here, here are all the drums down here in green. So you can see exactly where I got them from the pack by looking at the corresponding name on the samples right here. So I started it off with something simple, just keeping the rhythm with a short clap. Then we build up the energy during the buildups by introducing some impacts and sweeps and effects and that snare build. <laughs> to release all of that built up energy in the drop, I have that fill at the end, and then that white noise hit. And then to let the melodic element shine in the first half of the drop, I only have the kick playing. There's no other drums playing in the whole first half of the drop. <laughs> And then so we make sure the second half has more energy than the first half, that's when we introduce all these new drums here. So I'll let you guys go check out the rest of the pack yourselves on Splice. There's plenty of great one shots and loops and effects and melodic loops in there. So go check it out for yourself and have fun messing around with these sounds.